the M4 Mac Mini. I think it's pretty well established now that this baby Clydesdale kicks. Understandably, when they buy this thing, most people don't want to pay the Apple tax on the SSD. And also, this really doesn't have quite enough ports. I didn't think I needed 10 gigabit ethernet when I bought it, but now I think I want it. Behold, my own personal pile of accessories that turns this thing into a desktop, multimedia, creator-friendly, high achiever. And then there's also this other thing that I just thought was adorable, which turns your Mac Mini into a mini Mac Pro. But we'll get to this thing later. These are the accessories that I use with my Mac Mini to give it the capabilities that it naturally lacks. Starting with storage, since I think that's probably the biggest necessity if you're gonna go with the super stock 256 gigabyte version, but still wanna be able to do things. And I have a few different solutions that I use with this personally, but first, and taking advantage of the Thunderbolt 5 ports on the back of my M4 Pro Mac Mini, I have this drive from M4 SSD that can move 80 gigabits per second, which is 10 gigabytes per second, which is basically faster than any internal NVMe SSD you can buy. Let's get a fact check on that, that might not be true. So I paired it with a Samsung 990 Pro, which can hit 7,000 megabytes per second read and write. And I don't think people have a real understanding of that kind of speed. Seven gigabytes per second of actual read and write. Here's a screen recording of a real-time, not sped up file transfer. First, this is just a movie, a three gigabyte file of a movie. The transfer pop-up literally doesn't even show up because it's instant. So here's 50 gigabytes of movies. Watch this fucking thing go. Less than 10 seconds to transfer 54 gigabytes of movies. That is wild. So that's the super speed option. This this enclosure is a little expensive because it's Thunderbolt 5 and that's kind of new. Right now it's 199 bucks and it doesn't come with the SSD, but it's essentially the fastest possible option and it's super easy just to toss in your bag if you're going somewhere. I've also got this Mac mini sized external drive. It's even got the little vent on the bottom called the Minimate. This one is Thunderbolt 4, so it's half the speed of this one, but the base model M4 Mac Mini has Thunderbolt 4 ports, so this drive can max that thing out. And also that's half the max theoretical speed the drive in here isn't even as fast as the interface. NVMe drives can't even saturate all of the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 5, so that's really more of a future-proofing thing anyway. So with Thunderbolt 4, instead of hitting the full six gigabytes per second potential of this drive, it'll transfer at like four gigabytes per second. And it's still stupid fast at file transfers. It's 17 seconds to transfer 54 gigabytes of movie files. And it just sits perfectly under the footprint of your Mac. Very attractive if you're into that kind of thing. I keep my Plex server on this drive. It's been up for about three months and it's never disconnected. I know some people in the comments worry about permanently using USB-C interfaces but Thunderbolt stuff, I've never had a disconnect, personally. Great little drive, and this one does come with the NVMe pre-installed in it. Luckily, and Apple didn't used to let you do this, but now for big apps from the App Store, you can have it download the app directly to an external drive. So for instance, if you're gonna play the Assassin's Creed Shadows game that just came out, that downloads like 110 gigabytes. But in the App Store, you can just go to settings, click on this little checkbox to have it download big apps to external disks. So pretty much you can set it up so that the only thing actually running on the internal SSD of your Mac mini is the Mac OS and the application support. I still like the Thunderbolt 5 drive because I travel a lot for work. So if I'm in the middle of an edit and I have to bebop on out of town, it takes like four seconds to move a Final Cut Pro video project file onto this drive. And then when I'm on the plane or when I get to wherever I'm going, I'll just edit straight off of this drive on my MacBook Pro. And finally, if you're super into RGB, I also quite like this drive from Asus, the Rogue Strix Arion or something like that. But when it's plugged in, it has these beautiful lights. This one's only at USB 3.1. Gen 2 speeds though, so a max of 10 gigabits per second, but it's pretty and I'm just gonna eject it without even ejecting it. Next up, ports. Mac mini is pretty solid with five USB-C ports. If you have the M4 Pro, the three on the back are Thunderbolt 5. If you have the M4 base model, the three on the back are Thunderbolt 4, which is still very fast, but there are no USB-A ports and there's no SD card reader. And that's where this next thing comes in. Also the same footprint and shape as the Mac mini, also from Orico. This thing comes with four USB-A ports, two on the front, two in the back. The black ones are slow ones for your keyboard and mouse. The blue ones are fast one, 3.1 Gen 2 speeds. It's got separate mic in and headphone jack outs. So if you do music and you need to monitor with one port while you have a mic in the other port, it's got that. And it comes with a built-in NVMe drive. This one only runs at 10 gigabits per second, only 10 gigabits per second, but they do make a dual slotted USB 4 Thunderbolt 4 version of it. So really this thing could be your whole Mac mini expansion solution on its own. That is, unless you've decided to pump up your network to 10 gigabits 
gigabits after not upgrading your Mac mini at the time of purchase, which is what I did. And therefore you'll need another dongle for that. This thing plugs into any one of the USB-C ports and gives you 10 gigabits per second ethernet. This thing is totally plug and play. 10 gigabits makes this fast enough so you can edit over the network if you have another computer with a huge drive and you have all your files on that. Something I've always wanted to do even though there's no point in it for me since I'm in one studio. I don't know, maybe you and all the people you live with wanna share one giant NVMe drive that's super duper fast. You can use it over the network with almost no noticeable lag. Speakers. This computer has speakers, but they are underwhelming. I wanted a thing that I could dual use to bring out by the pool that also connects over Bluetooth, but also lasts a super long time so I don't have to think about charging it very often. And I landed on this Soundcore Boom 2 from Anchor. It's loud, the battery lasts a really long time. They claim this is waterproof. I said I wasn't gonna test that, but you know what? I'm gonna test that. I'm gonna go chuck this in the pool and see if it keeps playing. It connects over Bluetooth and it's even got an extra port so it can charge your phone off of its battery if you take it somewhere. While I'm in the studio, I use it for working out in my garage because it'll just stay connected to the mini but you can move it around the room and it's actually got pretty good bass. And then also playing Minecraft because I recently started throwing away my time doing that. An unexpected turn in my middle age. Good bass. Then there's this thing which offers literally no functional purpose at all. But I just think it's so fucking adorable. Your Mac just slides in here. There we go and then it becomes a mini version of the Mac Pro. The company says that because it's made of aluminum, it provides enhanced cooling, of which I am skeptical. It even has this little thermal pad down in here that for some reason will press on the side of the case of your Mac mini. But I'm gonna ignore that marketing gimmick because I think this thing looks cool as hell. It makes your power button more accessible. The Mini Mate hub no longer really fits anywhere. So if you go this route, I would pair it with a different USB-C hub that also has an NVMe drive built into it. This one does come with the drive when you buy it. It's got all those other same ports and slots and it even gives you an extra HDMI out. Also 10 gigabits per second, USB-C 3.1 Gen 2, not confusing at all. Which means it wouldn't matter if you hook this up to the front or back ports. I think Orico is just right in the sweet spot between super high quality brands, like, I don't know, Sony, Samsung, LG, whatever, and then the super cheap thrown together brands that have names that make no sense, or sometimes no names at all. There are a few companies in this category, like Ugreen, Anchor, Aki, Orico, that are all right in the middle there. They use higher quality components than the Timu stuff, but still borrow off the shelf controllers so they can keep things cheap. So like you can find these same docks on Amazon for I think like half the price, but with the name like Aki, Jure, or in some cases, no name at all. Those are bottom tier and their ports and cords will wear out pretty fast and I don't like them. And my keyboard. I found this thing a long time ago when I was looking for like a really clacky sounding mechanical keyboard. I should type something for real. This is from a brand called Have It. Is that gonna show up there? Have it. I love the colors, I love the sound of it. I like it enough that I got a second one for my second desk setup back there. My unsuccessful attempt to combat ADHD and motivation. This is my Mac mini pile. I actually just got this thing. I'm gonna be putting and hosting a Minecraft server on it that never turns off, persistent world. I still can't decide if I have any reason to keep the M4 Pro Mac mini. The M4 base Mac mini does me just fine. Other than to maybe make a few more comparison videos with it. Whatever, goodbye, goodbye. This baby Clydesdale kicks. <sighs> the real thing I put in danger doing this is my microphone, which is just above everything. And if that fire licks that little thing, psh